Shalom everyone. Welcome to this day. It is Friday the 26th of June 2020. This is Before the Throne, an online prayer program hosted by Mishkan. My name is Victor Dundo and I'm the lead pastor and your kingdom partner in the marketplace. Today we are going to be looking at the blessing of rest. The blessing of rest. Yesterday we were able to see how God blessed the animals, birds and the sea creatures to be fruitful and multiply after their kind in their likeness. He blessed man to be fruitful and multiply after his image in all the earth, but also to subdue the earth and have dominion over God's creation in the earth. Hallelujah. We defined the word bless as to be given power to prosper in God's intended purpose of creation. The third time we encounter this word is on the seventh day. And that is in Genesis chapter 2 verse 3. The Bible says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in, in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. This is at the beginning where there is perfection. Even before God reintroduced it as a law in Exodus to his redeemed slaves who never knew what rest was in their lifetime. Beloved, the subject of Shabbat cannot be fully exhausted in these 30 minutes. But I will zero on on a small portion to help you appreciate God's plan for man. When the Pharisees made Shabbat a burden and added their own traditions into the scriptures regarding, uh, regarding Shabbat. Jesus corrected them by bringing the original intent. Mark chapter 2, 23 to 27. I'll pick some few portions of that. 23 says, One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples walked along. They began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Then he said to them, that is in verse 27, The Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath. It was made by God to fulfill its intended purpose for you and I. That is the bottom line. It is a 24-hour day of rest beginning sunset on Friday meant to rejuvenate you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Let me tell you that God is restoring the true meaning of Shabbat or Sabbath. And this will be continue even into millennium. Hallelujah. Now, a Sabbath does not mean you get a day off from helping someone in need. There's a true meaning, and we'll be discussing that as we move along. 
Jesus healed on the Sabbath. After all, a Sabbath means concentrating time and giving it to the Lord, acknowledging he will provide for the needs and finances via other means. We look to him and him alone as our God. By the way, the only day in a week God gives a name is the Sabbath. And repeatedly throughout the Bible, he tells his people to remember and keep it holy. That's another topic altogether. Now, God, as the omnipotent one, did not need a day off due to exhaustion. And so we need to look at the deeper meaning when God says he rested. What did he mean by that? By his action at the beginning, God shows us that there is a pattern of work and rest for our existence on earth. And he sets apart the seventh day for the weekly rest and worship. Since we are created to reflect his image, we should be able to follow in his pattern he has called us to. God ceased to perform all his creative work. He gave us a pattern. To be healthy, to be free from the problems of earning a living, we must have Sabbath as a day to renew our strength and spirits, catch our breath, and to become a living being once more. We are not machines, but even machines take a Sabbath. Factories can work throughout the year, but there's a time they are going to be stopped. They'll come to a standstill. Why? To rejuvenate it once more. Sabbath comes to us to teach us that each of us needs to have some sacred space to enjoy ourselves with our families and friends. Feel one with our creator God and our friend. It provides us with a time to enjoy the world in silence and respect and honor. We find the shalom of God, the wholeness in our turbulent lives. We celebrate the day by seizing from our worries and work knowing that God is able to supply all our needs. Amen? We renew our bodies and soul by resting. One way to celebrate this is also with good food. It's a special time to deepen our relationships with God as couples with our children. It is a necessity for a long, healthy lives. The reason why there is more sicknesses in our time is because we have disregarded God's plan for man to have Sabbath. Now, when the fall of man came, man began to trust in himself, in his abilities to try to meet his own needs without God. And that's what the system of the world trains us to. Genesis 3, 7, after the fall, Adam lost the glory and tried to make clothes for himself. The place where you have needs and do not even look to God is the 
place where you try to meet your own needs without God. You just try to figure it out, figure it out in your strength, in your own understanding. You are going to take care of it after all. Going to God about it is the farthest thing from your mind. Let me tell you, the world system was birthed by the devil and therefore it was not set up for anybody to succeed. It was set up to keep you moving so much that you are going nowhere and don't even know about it. In that system, you try to figure out something. But in the kingdom, God has already figured it out and he tells you what to do. I want to try to give you a picture of man in the marketplace. This is a man or a woman who is working with no rest. Monday to Saturday, sometimes even on Sundays, at home, or they can even go back to the office due to the deadlines. Every day you leave for work as early as 5.30 a.m., especially during those days, and return home by 10 p.m. This continues till retirement. You are appeased with more promotions, benefits, allowances to make you work harder at the expense of many things. It becomes a challenge for you even to serve God. You are too tired to pray, to worship God, or to have a personal time with Him. It takes you away from the purpose of your creation to serve and to worship God. It gives you a religious comfort that so long as I give my tithes and offering, I'm still serving God. After all, it keeps the church programs alive. But your heart gets cold and disconnected from God. Your relationship with God is completely dead. And is, you become very susceptible to the things of this world. How about your health and life? The system ensures you are kept busy. No rest for your life and health. By the time you reach age 40 plus, the body is worn out, broken. Your immunity system is so low. Sickness and disease, they set in. But you will feel secure because you have insurance cover and so you will try not to worry again because of insurance you will hardly know how to depend on the god system of divine health your faith is still in hospitals until you discover that it is only temporary it fails also we saw this during the lockdown Hospitals were full. <laughs> there were no beds for people. Where are you going to run to? If you are sure that you will fly outside the country. It's not working now. How about family? This kind of system trains you to believe that work is more important than your family. That system does not honor God or family. It makes you feel that you can't live without it because it serves you and family. I believe lockdown was a blessing but surprisingly it was a curse to some families. This system ensures that there's no relationship at all with your spouse and children. And what will happen? Extramarital affairs will begin outside marriages. Divorce will set in. We'll have a fatherless, a motherless generation. 
as a result of all this. We create more problems than solutions because this work is what keeps and sustains our family. No rest. A friend of mine who had been out for long, working outside the country, when he came back, his son called him uncle. It was very sad for him. You don't have time for yourself. You don't even know yourself. It's about being busy, work, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> At the end of the age when you die, you die unfulfilled. With a destroyed life, family and generation. If you die before retirement, you are replaced immediately, even before your burial takes place. A big flower is sent with a small contribution, an envelope, and you are eulogized as a great man or woman, but it's the system which has chewed your life and <laughs> killed you. But even if you retire, you never get to enjoy retirement due to the burden of sicknesses brought about by overworking and lack of rest. Too much drug intakes, medicine, over a period of time due to illness that come along the way. The system works you up. There are lots of health burdens along the way. Terminal illnesses, diseases, which eventually will clear that retirement package. But you'll feel secure because you have made some money. And this list is endless with lots of more destruction than good. There are many other problems that come along with it. Why would God give us a Sabbath? Number one, I'll just take a few for the purpose because I'm zeroing on rest and work. That's why I'm bringing this subject. Number one, so that we could trust him. We see an interesting story in Exodus 16. When Moses, God instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel how to collect manna every day. Some, because they couldn't trust God, they went on the Sabbath and never got anything. But remember on the sixth day, they were supposed to collect twice. But in other days, if they did that, they would end up with maggots in the morning. Let me tell you, God wants us to trust in him. He has already pre-planned for our lives and provision. But you see, the fall of man, and if we work with the world system that trains us to trust ourselves, to provide for ourselves without God, you find that you are in charge of your life. And the motivational speakers will tell you, be in charge of your destiny. Who gave you that destiny? <laughs> Consult the owner. When we don't have Sabbath, what happens? We fall apart because of lack of rest. You encounter physical exhaustion and breakdown. We exhaust our brain. So its creative functions cannot work properly. We become more stressed. And we wear ourselves out to the point whereby we become so susceptible to more illness. Why do we need to rest? So that we can avoid idolatry. We run the risk of placing it before God in terms of importance. Our work becomes so important. 
that it even replaces God. You even don't go to church. You're so busy. You want to make money. Time is running out. And at the end of the day, <laughs> it's all vanity. God wants us to work. But at the same time, he wants us to stop and rest. Meditate on his goodness. Appreciate creation. Appreciate family. Celebrate with family. Amen. I want you to try it. Being afraid, just try it. And be renewed. Be rejuvenated in the presence of God. Enjoy. Laugh with your family. And worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to pray at this particular time. Father, we want to thank you. That at the beginning of creation. You gave man rest. As part of the blessing. A day set apart to rest. To honor you. To celebrate what you've done our families to rest in your presence. Lord, as a result of not honoring this word, our lives have been broken. Our families, we are no longer productive. As a result, there are lots of consequences that have come along the way. But today we turn back to you. To the place of rest. I pray that you will teach us to rest. We are too busy. And we thought that when we are busy. We can be productive. But we also see that we cannot abuse a principle. And succeed. And therefore we humble ourselves. Give us creative opportunities to rest. And as we rest, we receive the blessings that come with rest, the heavenly graces that you release when we obey your instruction. And therefore, I declare your blessings over your people as we enter into this weekend. The Lord bless you with his rest. May you enter into his rest and enjoy his grace, enjoy his loving kindness, enjoy his provision, protection in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord our God. Rebuild our body system, our immunity system again. Rejuvenate the cells in our bodies, even as we rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Till next week on Monday, same time from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. in the morning, Monday to Friday. The Lord bless you. Greet your family members. Greet your colleagues. Let us connect with our numbers on the screen, our social media, so that we continue with the discussion and praying together. We love you. God bless you.